Hi, this is Dominic with Easynomics, and we're going to look at the concept of economies of scale. Uh, this is a theory of the firm topic, and we'll be looking at the firm operating in the short run, where they have a fixed uh, resource, land, labor, capital. They may vary all of their resources to move into the long run, and then moving back into the short run. So here we have a graph, graph A. It's a model of a firm establishing economies of scale over time. What are economies of scale? It's the idea that as a firm gets larger and larger and larger through varying all of their resources, their land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, in the long run, that they're able to reduce their costs on average. And so we're able to see that as the firm is increasing output from Q1 to Q4, costs on average are falling, all right? And that is the idea between economies of scale. And so that's what we're gonna illustrate by using two short-run average total cost curves. So we, here we see we have the SRATC curve, this blue uh, line here, the short-run average total cost curve one, and then we also have a second one, this blue line over here. We also can see our supply curve, our upward sloping supply curve, equal to our marginal cost curve, and they, it is intersecting the average total cost curve at its lowest point, which indicates productive efficiency. So in previous videos, we have highlighted the relationship between the marginal cost and the average total costs in the short run. So our example is a coffee shop. Let's just use this simple example of a coffee shop. All right? This coffee shop or firm will be illustrated of moving from the short run to the long run back into the short run over time to achieve economies of scale. On the x-axis, we're measuring the quantity of output. And on the y-axis, we're just focusing on the costs of production. This firm, perhaps again, a coffee shop, starts at point A, or A1, with a quantity of output at Q1. And the costs, or their costs on average, is at C01. Let's assume that this coffee shop just has, uh, has just opened, and since the entrepreneur is unsure of the level of demand, only has one employee. But over time, as demand increases for the firm's output of coffee, the entrepreneur hires a second and third worker. And these three workers divide labor and specialize to increase production while lowering their costs on average to arrive to point B2. So as, they, as the entrepreneur hires that second, third worker, the three workers begin to divide tasks between each other. They begin to specialize their labor and their marginal productivity starts to improve and their cost on average begins to fall. As we see falling from A1 to B1 with quantity of output increasing from Q1 to Q2 and costs on average falling from CO1 to CO2. All of this a result of the division of labor and specialization, okay? Now demand continues to increase for the coffee shop's output, and the entrepreneur decides to hire a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth worker. But we know due to the law of diminishing margin returns, the limitations of the fixed resources being perhaps the fixed space, maybe the space is not large enough for the fourth, fifth, and sixth worker to operate, it reduces their marginal productivity which leads to costs on average rising. So yes, we're able to get more output from the hiring of that fourth, fifth, and sixth worker, but because they don't have enough space to operate, perhaps they begin to bump into each other, get in each other's way, they drop plates and so forth, costs on average for the entrepreneur begins to rise from B1 to C1 or from CO2 back to CO1. So this pro you know, provides a dilemma for the entrepreneur at point C1. Should he or she fire that fourth, fifth, and sixth worker and return to B1 where they were productively efficient, but that would lead to a reduction in output? Or should they vary all of their fixed resources, expand, and get a little bit larger, give more space to that fourth, fifth, and sixth worker? So we're going to assume that the entrepreneur decides to expand their coffee shop. They vary the fixed resource of land. Perhaps they get a license to be able to serve uh, coffee on the sidewalk. They enter the long run 
and they go back into the short run. They have a now fixed space to serve coffee on the sidewalk, and they have provided more space for that fourth, fifth, and sixth worker to work. And the result of that additional space, plus these workers dividing tasks, specializing, we see that the costs on average have now fallen significantly from CO2 to CO3, or from point C1 to D1. In addition, because we've provided more space for these workers, we're also getting more output. So the firm is now operating at D1 with their uh, supply curve S2 intersecting with the short and average total cost curve 2 at D1 where they are productively efficient. Okay, So effectively, the firm has achieved economies of scale. As they go from the short run, their short run average total cost curve, to their second short run average total cost curve, um, going from short run to long run, back to short run, expanding, getting larger, employing more labor, giving more sport space for the labor to be productively efficient, we see that costs on average begins to fall while output begins to rise, which is the definition of economies of scale. Economies of scale, increasing output in the long run as costs on average or average total costs begins to fall. Now, how are firms able to achieve this? In the long run, as firms begin to employ more labor, we get specialization of labor. We get uh, the entrepreneur buying uh, experienced workers that are very productively efficient in a particular task. So perhaps for the coffee shop, you're getting a person that just specializes in making coffee, uh, another person that just specializes in serving people, another person that specializes in just uh, cleaning the dishes and so on. You can also get specialization of management. Maybe the coffee shop entrepreneur owns a, opens a second or a third location and they have a, um, a manager with a perhaps uh, degree in business management, managing those locations, they're a specialist, and they can uh, get their, their, their labor to be productively efficient in those locations. And additionally, as the firm uh, expands, they can buy more specialized capital equipment, tools and resources that increase productivity, perhaps a faster espresso machine, uh, cooking equipment to make sandwiches that are efficient, and so on. We also have this concept of indivisibility of capital equipment. We are buying machinery that is more and more specific to a particular task, such as um, um, you know, let's say you know some machines are only available in large sizes that require large volumes of output in order to be used effectively. Um, they cannot be divided up into smaller pieces of equipment. So as the entrepreneur gets bigger, they buy those large machines to increase output. Um, we can also get indivisibility of efficient processes. So in this case, as the firm gets larger, we might be looking at mass production assembly lines requiring large volumes of output in order to be used efficiently. So the entrepreneur getting large enough to be able to um, employ that capital equipment and uh, become more efficient in the process. And also we get to the idea of the spreading of costs over time or over large volumes of output. So costs of certain activities such as marketing and advertising, design, research and development uh, results in lower average total cost curve as the firm is able to increase output over time. We're dividing those uh, costs by an increasing quantity of output so the cost per unit of output starts to fall. Okay, And this is basically the idea behind economies of scale. And that's it. In the information section of this uh, video, I'll have a full analysis as, um, of this uh, model. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.